Hi there, this is David Williams. I'm going to talk to you today about decoders in digital electronic circuits. Now at its most fundamental, I guess, a decoder is simply a circuit that changes a code into some other set of signals. But the general form of a decoder is one, is like what we see here, where it's a circuit that's going to take some value at the input, and based on the value at the input, determine which one of the outputs is going to be active. What we see here is an active high decoder. So let's go to a blank page here and start off. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out how this circuit, oops, this circuit over here was created, but let's just start off looking at the, at the black box of, of a decoder. Okay, so here's my black box decoder and this is a 2 to 4 decoder. And so it's going to have two inputs. Let's call these I1 and I0. And it's going to have four outputs. Let's call them output 3, output 2, output 1, and output 0. Now in this case, this is an active high decoder because what the output that is selected to be active will be high while the other ones will be low. And, and the basic truth table or the basic uh, description of the way the circuit works is if you've got some values for I1 and I0, and if I1 and I0 is equal to 1, 1, 1, 1 is the number 3, it's going to select output 3, will equal 1, all the others, will equal 0. If I1, I0 is equal to 1, 0, then output 2 will be selected. It will be active. It's going to be set to 1. And the others, all the other ones, will be equal to 0. And you can see, so if, if the I1 and I0 are 0, 1, then output 1 will be equal to 1. The others will be 0. And if I1, I0 are both, are both zeros, then output 0 will be 1, and the others will be 0. There's, there's my active high decoder, and the active low decoder is just the opposite of that. And I'll draw the a block diagram for what an active low decoder is going to look like. We'll have our two inputs, I1 and I0 again. And on the outputs, I'm going to draw the little bubble to indicate an inverter there to make these, all of these, active low. I could have taken this active high decoder and put inverters or not gates on, on 03, 02, 01, and 00 and made those all active, active low. I got my four outputs there. And to be even more correct, I could even put the bar over these to indicate that the, the signals themselves are active low. And it says a two to four another two to four decoder and in this but this case it is active low. And to show you very specifically what I mean by active low, if in this case if I1, I0 are equal to one one, it's going to select output three. And the selecting output three is going to make it active, output three will be equal to zero while the others will be equal to 1. And we're going to follow the same pattern as we did for the active high one, except O2 will be a 0, and the others will be a 1 if I1, I0 is 1, one 0. And hopefully you can, you can recognize the pattern and figure out what the rest of the values are going to be. Now how would we go about designing a circuit like this? An active, uh, let's look at the active high decoder. Well, we've got two inputs. We've got I1 and I0 are our two inputs. And then we have four different outputs. And each, so each one of those outputs is actually going to need its own truth table and its own logic circuit. So let's just look at output three right now. So we've got our two inputs and our one output. And with two inputs, we'll have four possible combinations. And for each one of those possible combinations, let's examine what O3 is going to be. 
O3 is only selected if I1, I0 are both 1s. And in that case, output 3 will be a 1. For all other cases, output 3 will be a 0. So really easy to see that output 3 is equal to I1 anded with I0. Or to put this in a, in a logic circuit, we'd have a simple AND gate. I1 and I0 as our inputs, and output 3 as our outputs. And we could do the same sort of truth table for, for figuring out O2, output 2, output 1, and output 0. And hopefully if you went through and did that, you would find that this would be the circuit that you would need for, I need an inverter right there, for output 2. This is the circuit you would need for output 1. And this is the circuit that you would need for output 0. Now, how would you change the design of this circuit to make it an active low circuit? Well, very simple. You just put an inverter on the output of each one of these gates, turning them from AND gates into NAND gates. What we've looked at are some 2 to 4 decoders, but you could also have a 3 to 8 decoder. Active low or active high again, and in this case, a 3 to 8 decoder would have 1, 2, 3 inputs and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 outputs. So the value of the 3 bits is going to determine which one of the 8 outputs is active. We could have a 4 to 16 decoder. Hopefully you can guess. Hopefully you guess that a 4 to 16 decoder is going to have 4 inputs and the value of those 4 bits is going to determine which of the 16 outputs is activated. <clears throat> you sort of see this pattern of um, the number of inputs. If you take 2 to the power of the number of inputs, that's going to give you how many outputs you have. But that doesn't have to always be the case. You could also have a binary coded decimal to decimal decoder. And what this binary coded decimal to decimal decoder is going to do is it's going to take a binary coded decimal number. A binary coded decimal number is going to be four bits. And remember, a binary coded decimal number is just a four bit way of representing the numbers zero to nine, where zero would be a four, four zeros, and nine would be one zero zero one. And then the value at the input is going to determine which of the nine outputs is active. So we get nine down to zero. One of those will be active based on the value here. So, I mean, for example, if we had the number 1000 zero, zero, zero here, then output 8 there would be active. That would be equal to 1. And all the others would be equal to 0. Now, I'm sure the question that's on your mind is, where would you want to use one of these decoder circuits? Well, one really good example of where they're very commonly used is in address decoding. And a really simple example for address decoding would be we're trying to select, let's say we're trying to select which of, say, four memory banks we want to, we want to activate and, and uh, access. So we could use a 2 to 4 decoder. We've got our input signals, I1 and then I0. And we've got our four output signals, 1, 2, three, four, and each one of those output signals is going to one of four memory banks to activate it. So we usually, on a memory bank, there's usually going to be an, a select signal that needs to be, needs to be on in order to, to turn the memory on and make it ac accessible. So we could use a two to four decoder to select which one of the memory banks we want to access. So maybe this is RAM, call it RAM 3, RAM bank 2, RAM bank 1, and RAM bank 0. And of course we still need some more signals coming in here, some address signals coming in, some data signals coming out. But this 2 to 4 decoder is going to use 2 bits to select 
um, which one of these four outputs, 3, 2, 1, and 0, is going to be activated. So hopefully that gives you some insight into what a decoder is and, and how you could design a decoder, and hopefully now you can design any size of decoder that you'd want. And I will see you in the next video.